Uh, good morning, good evening, and welcome to yet another lectionary podcast here at Concordia Theological Seminary. Yes, my friends, it's been a while since we met in this environment, and we meet in a, a rather bizarre text. Here I am, I live in Isaiah studies, and I'll be the first one to admit that I may have had to triple check to make sure that this was actually a lectionary reading. We're dealing with Isaiah 29, 11 to 19, that is paired with a Mark reading that attacks the elders, the chief priests, for their complete inability to read scripture. And that is the context here in Isaiah 29. So a couple questions to consider as we begin to approach this text. Isaiah 29 is in sort of the you know, flyover, the Midwest of Isaiah, and that it's in this section of woes from 28 to 33 that attack a very specific political situation, namely the events of about 705 BC, in which the question is, do you rely on Yahweh or do you rely on Egypt for help? That said, the principle at stake here is that the people have reached a point of hardness and deafness where they are no longer to hear, able to hear. And it's within this context of hardness and deafness, a big issue in Isaiah that goes way back to Isaiah chapter 6 with the prophet's commission, that we meet the people who have now been so thoroughly hardened that they have devolved to an absolute absurdity. That said, now we have an opportunity to explore what God does to hardened, lost hearts. Now let's turn our attention to Isaiah 29, beginning at, at verse 11. It starts out easy enough. Uh, and the vision of all of this, hakol modifies hazon, has become, note, that's a pretty familiar construction for those of you keeping score at home. It's haya plus lama to become. This entire vision has become like the words of, that's a construct state, masculine plural noun, like the words of a document which is sealed. Uh, sealed here is from hatam, cal passive participle, and you note that by the shurik between the, between the tav and the mem. Now things get absurd, which is given to him, namely him, modify, and how do we describe the him? El yode hasefer, literally uh, to the one knowing the scroll, uh, one who knows how to read, saying, Kara na ze. Kara, the schwa here tells you that's a cal imperative from Kara. Please read this. And now things get really bizarre. But he says, that's a hiffle of, of Yakal. I am not able to read. I am not able because, the di because it is hatom. It is sealed. The question really becomes not a matter of the fact that they can't read scripture, but they are utterly ignorant and utterly unable, unable to hear the message. Context-wise, we've already heard baby talk earlier in 29 with the image of kav lakav zav zav. They have turned into utter gibberish. And now it gets even more bizarre. And he gives the scroll upon one who is not knowing the scroll. I share lo yada, basic cal perfect, their masculine singular, who knows the scroll saying, no, a question gets repeated. And this really heightens the absurdity of the people's condition. Read this. And he says, <laughs> in the uh, Mr. Obvious moment, Lo yadati sefer, I do not know the scroll. And now we get the punchline. No, this here has been nothing but absurdity. These people who should know Torah, who should know to trust Yahweh no matter what the circumstances are, who should know how to properly interpret God's word. They have devolved into absurd children who are making really silly requests. 
Now we get the punchline. Why this absurdity of the sealed scroll and illiteracy? And now that takes us to verse 13. Vayomer Adonai la'an ki nishgash ha'am hazeh. Adonai said, note, divine name here is somewhat interesting. Uh, we're not dealing with Yahweh, we're dealing with Lord title. Uh, this implies some sort of judgment going on, at least a distancing word, probably at the very least. And the Lord said, because this people, Nagash, uh, draw near, near to me, this people draw near. And note, this also is somewhat distancing. Uh, with their lips and with uh, Shafatau, with their, with their lips, or with their mouths and with their lips, they honor me. That's a P.O. of Kavad, Kavaduni, with the object suffix, honor me. Here, take the Vav as adversative, but its heart, Rahak, is far from me. And and their fear will be, and now how is this fear done? Fear of Yahweh, basic tenet of faith. But the problem isn't so much bad political alliances or whatever the historical context here. The problem becomes a matter of the heart, a matter of faith. But their fear for me is a mitzvah on a shim melu, melu mada, a commandment of men which has been learned. We have reached a bit of a stark moment here in the text. Stark in the sense of that the people really are going through the motions and missing the point. Hence, it's pairing with the gospel reading for this Sunday. The good news is Yahweh intervenes. Note, Lacan, therefore, Therefore, connects us to what happened previously. Therefore, now things get exciting. Hineni, attention getting particle. Pay attention here. Therefore, begin, I will again. Hiffel, infinitive construct. You know it's a hiffel from the hay. Patak under the performative tells you, also emphasizes the hiffelness of it. I think I just made up a grammatical term. To do wondrous things to this people. This word is loaded. This is your Exodus term. This is your Exodus language. It is crazy loaded. Namely, and it gets better, note the emphasis. I'm going to do this. Namely, a wonder and a wondrous thing. What is God's wondrous deed doing? At this point, we may be expecting all kinds of exciting things. Exodus language, which is important in this section because we have a lot of anti-Exodus language, Within 28 to 33, for example, 30 verse 1. Now we discover that God's ways surpass human understanding. And here is a preaching element you may want to consider. And the wisdom of their wise ones will perish. Wisdom takes all kinds of forms. Wisdom in the sense of here doing the right thing, political or proper understanding. But the issue in Isaiah has always been that the people go through the motions and are faithless. They're blind, they're ignorant, and they're dead. And it gets and it's further emphasized. Uh, Ubinath, Navonau, uh, uh, tatau. And the understanding and the understanding of their understanding ones. A note: the language here is really is poetic in the sense that it really gets our attention. It's glorious, glorious language, and this repetition of sounds. Uh, this is a weird parsing for those of you who enjoy parsing, and you know who you are. This is a hith pael. Typically, we would expect this to be tith sa teth, but Hebrew doesn't like to do that. And it will, you know, from Satar means to be hid. So the, the understanding of their understanding ones will be hid. Now we move into condemnation. Hoy. Hoy, easy word to translate. Hoy, woe. 
A uh, better way to understand it is in the context of a funeral. It's not so much that the prophet is condemning the people. Uh, rather, it's uh, go play in traffic, you're dead, have a nice day, goodbye. It's, it's a funeral lament over the deadness of the people. Woe to the ones, note, this is a hifil participle, and you know that because of the patak under that mem. Woe to the ones who hide from Yahweh to conceal counsel. It's all a matter of allegiance and trust. And by doing this, they are no longer allied with Yahweh. Vahayath, and are in darkness, and their, deed, and, and their deeds. And they say, and note echoes of Genesis 3, sort of. Mi ro'eni umi yodeni. Nice little rhyme even, nice little sound pattern at the very least. Who sees us and who knows us? Now we know why these people are doomed. They're acting as if God can't see. They're acting as if they know and God doesn't. And now we move from the woe, go play in traffic, you're as good as dead, to hafakem im ki homer hayoser. Isaiah 10 has similar language of the axe boasting in its maker applied to Assyria. Now the people are, oh, resembling that. Hafak could be translated as perversity. A better way, perhaps, uh, you turn things upside down. I believe that's how the new JPS translates it as well. You got it backwards. Namely, and here's how you got it backward. Im here implies almost an optative in Hebrew. If, like the clay, will be the potter. Proverbial language, which is interesting, because we have wisdom already up here earlier. So we have language derived from the natural world. Like the trail, uh, so like the Homer, like the clay, well, the potter, that's a nifal. Typically, you would expect there to be a hierarch here. You can't double a het. That's your triangle of recognition points when you know that it's a nifal. Uh, so will be accounted because, or and here continuing, you well, know, you know, because or perhaps that, and that it will say, Yomer, nothing too exciting, just a cow and cow imperfect, and that it will say, namely, the work will say to the worker, uh, something to really consider as we're now almost drawing to the end of this pretty lengthy text is how often we have repetition of similar, of, of same roots. So, asa, asa. Well, the one that made things say to its maker, asani. And asani here, uh, uh, he, he made me not, do not make me. Or the yatser, the potter, or the pot here, excuse me, yatser, will the pot say, to the Yotzeron, and again, note all these sound repetitions, it's pretty, pretty, kind of cool. Oh, first, L, say to its maker, uh, you have no understanding. This finishes almost a bit of an absurdity here, in the sense that the people's problem is that they truly don't realize their place. And now we almost come to the exciting conclusion. Uh, here, hey, that's your, uh, hey, here's your interrogative, hey, and we'll not again in a little while, uh, piling up the language of a little while, and now we have this great language of bouleversement, or reversal, and, and now we have almost this eschatological move being made. Will Lebanon be, re, be returned, Yeshav, return to Carmel? Lebanon, claim to fame, rich forests are going to be turned into a field, a fruitful field. Carmel's typically a, a pretty positive language. And Ha Carmel and Carmel, 
to a forest will be considered. Uh, we saw this language already just earlier, way back in verse 16. And now, and now God's intervention happens. The people themselves are blind, deaf, unable to save. Their leaders have completely, completely messed up. They're hoy, they're good as dead. And now we finally meet this conclusion in 18 and 19, in which we find out what those wonders that go way back to a previous verse say. Vashavaru bayom hahu, hahu being eschatological language, hahu in that day. Now things get strange. The deaf will hear the words of the scroll. Remember, words of the scroll, back a few hours ago when this podcast started, or a few minutes ago, is that we had, the scroll was unable to be read. But now with Yahweh's intervention, hearing happens, and the deaf hear, and it gets better. And the ones in darkness, and from darkness, and or afel, ah, gloom, and from darkness, the eyes of the blind will see. Uh, this really gets into the heart of Jesus' miraculous ministry in that when Jesus opens the eyes of a blind, this isn't just a cool healing moment. Rather, this is an image of when Yahweh is on the scene, when Jesus is on the scene, is that what now happens is all of this nasty blindness that, frankly, the people that Jesus is interacting with are guilty of in Mark, is that this is now all utterly reversed. And instead, those who can't see, see. And we reach the conclusion. Vayasafu anavau. And the poor will, Yasaf, will increase in Yahweh. And how does it happen? Shimha, loaded psalm language, rejoicing. Well, and what are they going to increase? They're going to increase their joy. And the poor of my people, Vav Yone Adam. And what is their joy going to be increased? The Kadesh Yisrael Yagirah. And in the Holy One of Israel, they will rejoice. What a fascinating text for us to play around with. And as you consider where to preach with this, a um, few things to consider. Uh, One, we have the problem of going through the motions faithlessly versus faithfully, which is one of the hard, it's really a significant issue here in Isaiah 29. Frankly, it goes back, way back to Isaiah 1, which is the introduction to the entire book. So consider that as a possible option. And perhaps with the, that you may want to also consider that we end up with some pretty phenomenal gospel here. It's, this is a lot of gloom and doom. The people are absurdly hardened, absurdly illiterate, absurdly, oh, in trouble. But in the midst of this absurdity, God's wisdom shows up, shows up in Jesus, in which the blind are opened and joy increases because Messiah has come. Yes, this is an actual lectionary text. Enjoy an opportunity to preach in an unfamiliar moment of Isaiah, And I pray that God blesses you on your journey.